We have an incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting a chance to chat with a guy who was an incredibly successful coach at Temple. Why? At Baylor. Why? So successful at Baylor. Hey, yep. listen, college game day was down there. Oh, yeah. The eyes of the world were on Baylor. And the reason why we know how successful he was because an NFL owner flew their asses to Waco, Texas. Okay. Yep. And said, uh, what's all here? Well, Dr. Pepper, I think, was founded here. Mm -hmm. There's some other stuff that happened. Magnolia away. Farms. Yes. Magnolia Farms with Chip and that Joanna Gaines. Right. The other thing you were And then there was yeah. something else that happened way back in the day. But we're, bingo. There, there, yeah, there. that's why. <laughs> we're going to the head coach uh, to sign him to the biggest deal that has ever been kind of public in the NFL to head coach. That's how big his brain was. He goes to Carolina. It doesn't work out. Will anybody work out in Carolina? We mm -hmm. have no idea. Now he's back at Nebraska, leading the Cornhuskers in a brand new era of college football and Big Ten football. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach Matt Rule. Yeah, coach! Hey, What's up, guys? hey, thanks for waiting through the technical difficulties. That's 100% my fault. I do apologize for making you wait. How are you, coach? How's life? We feel good back in college ball again? Back on the 24-7 grind of college football? Man, I, I, I love it. I love, uh, I, love, I love game days in college. Um, recruiting's gotten a little different now. Now you're now you're recruiting uh, your team, another team, <laughs> high school kids. So it's a little different recruiting, but 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 the the players are awesome. You know they're they're all here for the right reasons, man. It's been a lot of fun, and Nebraska is a special place. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, how do you find those those players that are right like a, a good fit for you and your program? We're always hearing about yeah, you got to worry about people entering the portal and all of that. But how do you now, especially with how recruiting is? How do you know now that you're back in the college game? Do you look at it any differently than you did before? Yeah, I, I think I think you have to. I think you have to uh, find players that are coming here for the right reasons. Um, I don't think you can recruit them. You can't do a sales job. Um, you have to tell them exactly what it's going to be like. I think nowadays, uh, young people want transparency. They want to know what it's going to be like. Um, and so you better you better just keep it very real with them. Tell the parents. Tell them this is what it's going to be like here. Uh, have conversations and relationships with them. Like the, the, the gone are the days of like you show up and there's five other linebackers. You know, and you're like they're they're going to know every player that you're talking to, and it's it's what it should be. Be honest, um, and I think when you find that, when you find someone that really wants to be at Nebraska, you take them, and uh, you know you you have them for four or five years because it's hard to win with guys for only a, a year or two. Yeah, building a program is going to be tough, seemingly, in this modern transfer portal era. I think there's over a thousand guys in there right now, and you talked about how you got to recruit high school guys, other teams, and your own team. Each year, you kind of have to make sure people stay as Nebraska Cornhuskers. Sound like you're trying to recruit out of high school that way. Now, there's headlines being made right now about you having massive success Coming out of high school, congrats. Okay. There you go, Matt. Congrats. Hey, you're not allowed to talk about it, I don't think. I know the NCAA has really strict rules that are all really good and fair. You're not allowed to talk about it. And then also transfer portal. There's big conversation happening about you. How involved in all of that? How much are you preparing for the future with transfer portal guys, like for two years, potentially signing a free agent first, building the roster? And like how how do you kind of balance the modern day of college football recruiting now that you're back in it and expected to be great in college football. I, I think each team's different. I think for us, we'll be like 90% high school and high school recruiting and high school development. It's, it's kind of who we are. I mean, when you, when you win at a place like Temple, when you win at Baylor, you like getting guys in and practicing them and developing them and, um, you know, and, and you want them to, you want them to want to stay. So, and then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll augment it with a player here, a player there, someone maybe you have a connection to or a relationship with, but, um, even even in my time in the NFL, both as an assistant at the Giants and then our time in Carolina, it was really important to me. Like in Carolina, like I wanted to re-sign Christian McCaffrey. I wanted to re-sign DJ Moore. I wanted I wanted to be the guy that was taking care of his own guys in the locker room, not always going outside the locker room. And I think at this level, it's important to me that our locker room knows that you know what uh, the coach cares about them. He's not always you're not going to bust your tail for three years and all of a sudden the coach is going to bring someone in ahead of you. Um, so that, that, that's really important to us. Try to do as much high school as possible. But when the time comes and you can get a difference maker, like, you better go get them. And uh, there's some out there. Yeah. And how do you – you said uh, – we have your press conference actually two weeks. It was a big deal for me because I, too – now, you've been in a long time. But I'm getting, like, baptized in college football. I obviously followed college football and, like, knew what teams were good and everything like that. But I grew up in Pittsburgh. So, like, I didn't fully understand – college football as a whole, and then now we're in this massive transition era. So this press conference that you had just a couple weeks ago was like very eye-opening, I think, for me and a lot of people about the state of college football. Here's you looking incredibly handsome, by the way, oh, yeah. from a few weeks ago. 
<laughs> make no mistake that a, a good quarterback in the portal costs you know a million to a million five to two million dollars right now. So just 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 on the same page, right? So um, let's, let's make sure we all understand what's happening. So um, um, you know, there's some teams that have six six or seven million dollar players playing for them. My favorite line in there, not only the information because that was certainly mm -hmm. information. I think a lot of people were excited to learn because we hear the chatter. But basically, when you say so, that's what. Just so we know, like that is what life is. It was almost like you were explaining to people like, hey, this is what college football is right now. That that really needed to be said. Thankful for that. Is there like just a slotted amount seemingly already made for different positions? And is there like, do you, is there somebody that manages the amount of money that you like how it's professional, right? This mm -hmm. is like professional ball all of a sudden. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I, I took so people were not happy with me. I've had some other college coaches kind of get on me and say, Matt, you know, you reset the market. <laughs> um, but I do think it's important that people know, right? Because a, what what I'm afraid of is, you know, and like you, know, like you said, I went to the NFL. I'm, I'm I, like, I don't care. I'll, I'm going to say what I think is right, and when people like it, they like it. They don't like it, they don't like it. Like I'm going to say what's happening. And um, at the end of the day, there are no contracts. There are no. This is and Charlie Baker from the NCAA is trying to make it where the college is like we can't even have the conversation with the players about the money. So now you have all throughout college football, you have players getting agents sometimes they're great agents nfl agents sometimes they're not certified there is there's not there's no like nflpa regulating it they're dealing with third parties for each school each school has a different amount and um it's 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 there's no system to it i had a, an nfl gm text me this week and he was like bro how come you guys don't just make it binding how come you guys i said i said we can't even have a conversation or else we get in trouble so it's them dealing with a third party they can tell a kid hey you're going to get a million dollars and then they can show you can transfer from Nebraska, go somewhere else, and then they say, "Hey, you know what? We don't have that money anymore." And oh, by the way, once you transfer, you're stuck at the second school, so you actually get penalized. Like you get penalized for recruiting a kid out of high school. He can leave for more money somewhere else, but if he goes somewhere else, he's stuck there till he graduates. So there is no system, and I think it's important that people know that. I because you know what, some good Pat, some good coaches are losing their jobs, and some good programs are they're they're they're, they're building players up, and then. Players are leaving, and I'm all for players. Let me just say this: I'm all for players making money. Absolutely. I'm all for NIL. You know, I just don't think you know people should be walking into your program and and offering a player on your roster money like that would that would never happen in the NFL. Like you know, you, you got to trade it. You have there, you have you have rules. There's conversations that have to like. You know, there's a little bit of like some morality to this entire thing. Yeah, and, and so I, I worry about the players. I mean, some players are going to get a lot, but a lot of players are going to enter the portal and end up with nothing. A lot of players are going to be told they're getting X, Y, and Z and get nothing. And at the end of the day, not everyone goes to the NFL. So I think we have to have the conversation about it. We have to talk about it and not talk about it to get rid of it. Just, man, like make, make it competitive and make it real. Yeah, and the issue is it would have to be collectively bargained is what everybody says. So who becomes the players' union? Who represents them? Because those people have to be good. But what really legitimately sound person that is a good business person wants to take that job mm -hmm. instead of what they're currently doing? Like it is – it's almost – Seemingly looking ahead, I've thought about this a lot too because I feel like NIL deals are a lot in the world that we live in. And like, I'm a former player who has always been like, hey, Pat White deserved to get paid whenever he was at West Virginia. Steve Slayton deserved to get paid whenever he was at West Virginia. I watched a couple guys build up an entire campus, like change an entire university over a four year run pretty much. And they didn't see any of it. And it was like, so I've been pretty wide open about it. But it's like to sign up and do that would be a tall or an mm -hmm. impossible task almost. It, it's like, it's an interesting time here because how everybody agrees that there's a problem. I think everybody, every coach we've had on, every commissioner that we've had come on, and I'd assume players that are getting screwed and fucked with, for the first time in their life, realizing that these deals aren't real, they probably would like there to be some sort of binding guidelines in this entire thing. But how's it happened, Coach? Have you thought about that? Have you have you given a take on how we figure it out? Because I don't know what the answer is, and I've tried to figure out what it would be. I think, and I, as I said, Charlie Baker at the NCA mentioned this week about letting schools pay the money themselves. Because to your point, Pat White and Steve Slayton would have ended that year, and they would have had every school in the country saying, hey, come play here. We got guys playing at three schools now. You know, you got guys playing seven years. And I'm not – Again, I'm not talking about any one situation. I'm talking about in general. Um, There's guys playing you know, like yeah, like yeah, eight I, years. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have. They would have been. They would have had a lot of temptation to leave West Virginia. And and again, every situation is a little different. But like, I think the school should have the opportunity to 
engage in communication and negotiations. Like, like in a, you know, you're in the NFL. You're, you, what does your agent take? Three percent, four percent, max three. You know, yeah, three three percent, right? So these guys, you know, because it's marketing, because it's nil, but but guys are taking giving away twenty percent of what they make, and to, to agents that are working with. And so now you're talking about twenty percent after taxes, which is really like thirty five percent. Um, you know, I, I, you know, who's helping? You know, who's helping these guys? We're really lucky in Nebraska. We have an amazing collective eighteen ninety. Like. They do they, they they do tax work with the kids. They 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 help them with all the all these things because like people don't understand capital gains. I don't even understand. No that. way. I, I yeah. do it. Like, no I mean, way. I couldn't even commit to it. Yeah. So so I, I just think there's a, a way bigger thing out there that's going to happen. And right now people have COVID years. People, this is all going to change in a couple of years. And there's going to be a bunch of guys as as the numbers go down. There's going to be a bunch of guys that went in the portal. They're going to have to walk on somewhere. And um, I just think at the end of the day, like we should be fighting for players, and we're fighting for players to make money, but also not to not to get screwed along the way. And uh, I think there's, I think letting the schools be involved. You, like I didn't take this job until they handed me a contract. Well, I'm pretty sure I saw your deal, Pat. You're talking about my deal, deal at, at Carolina. I saw your deal. No, you, no, I'm sure no, you guys, nobody, I'm sure you guys no, signed no a contract. Seen right? my deal. Yeah, no, people <laughs> think they've seen my deal. They have. <laughs> They have not, you know, they have not, <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. Yes, you're not doing that until we have a, a gr like, hey, who's paying? When are we paying? How's the money coming? What do I have to do? What do you have to do? What's expectations? Okay, now here we go. And then there's lawsuits that come on the other side if the, either side doesn't hold up the end of the bargain. Now, nobody wants to sue anybody. You hope to get into business with each other for good reason, for a long time, want to be great partners. But in college football, we've seen there's over a thousand, shit doesn't yeah. work yeah. sometimes. And it's like, what happens to all that? I haven't even thought about that entire narrative of like deals not being paid. And then those agents that are taking 20%, where do they go? Oh, they got another client, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And uh, what a scene. What a scene in there right now. Go ahead, comment. The kid from Florida last year who plays D-line with oh. the Bears now, his deal was 25% of his career earnings for the rest of his life. Jesus. Hey, Coach Roll, figure it out, dude. Come on. Figure, <laughs> hey, figure it out. And it's, let's, uh, let's skip that whole conversation, though. Let's get past that. Let's talk about your team now. How do we feel? How do we feel about the team? We got to feel pretty good after the first year, right, with where Nebraska had been. And obviously, I think what I've learned from movies and watching on the internet and watching games, great fan base yeah. over there in yeah. Nebraska, right? Bro, it's 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 outrageous. Like, I've never been somewhere where they are, the people are in the stands to watch warm-ups. Like, they're, the, they're, the, the stadium is full 45 minutes before the game because they want to, they appreciate their Cornhuskers so much, they want to watch all the players warm up. And they stay till the end. And so, you know, we had we had we had a fun year, man. We were up and down. We were five and three at one point. We lost the last four all by a field goal or an overtime. We, we got it. We got a great young team. We'll be a team, I believe, in the in the coming years that everyone in college football is going to have to deal with. And uh, I think it's great what's happening with the Big Ten. You know, we're we're we're, we're a national brand now. We're like you know we're like the, a mini NFL. I mean, we're going we go from Oregon and Washington, USC to Penn State, Rutgers, and then here we are. In the middle of the country, just kind of sneaky, quiet, mm -hmm. with an amazing fan base, elite facilities. We can we can fly wherever we want to recruit. Um, I think we'll be pretty good. Okay, I love that. That's probably the reason why you took the gig, right? Because a lot of places want a Matt Rule whenever you're out of the Carolina Panthers back in college because of your success. I assume you experience all those things whenever you're doing your interviews and in, in sites. Yeah, you know, it's kind of you know, it wasn't cool to get fired. That that wasn't fun not to get fired in the middle of the season, but I, it gave me time. So my wife and I, we flew out here. We, you know, we flew out here on a game day weekend. We, we wanted to see the town. You know, I, I didn't have a great picture of what Nebraska was going to look like. Like, I thought maybe like a campus and you know some farms and you know a small little town. I got here, man. It's a huge, huge city. I mean, not huge, a really nice sized city. I drive forty five minutes to Omaha. It's unbelievable. Uh, country concerts, college world series, unbelievable. Jeez, so, you fell in Julie love. And I, yeah, well, Julie and I were like, you know what, like. Like we wanted to raise our kids somewhere nice with nice people. Um, these people here are nice. We want to live in you know in the middle of the country in the Midwest. Good, good values, good people, good everything. And uh, Trev Alberts was a former football player, is the AD here. And when you have a guy that understands what it takes to win in the office above you, you have a chance to win. And I've learned that. I've learned like I have to have a great partner. And uh, Trev Trev's a great partner. So I I said, hey, let's do it. And I've loved every minute of it since I got here. 
congratulations on finding a home. Now, Ty has a question for you on that note. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned, you know, in like a couple years, hey, I think the whole country is going to realize like Nebraska is kind of a team to be reckoned with. And as an Iowa alum and an Iowa fan, like right when you got hired, I was like, oh, shit, Nebraska is going to be good again in a couple years. So I'll, I'll echo that sentiment. But to what you said, and like you look at Nebraska's fan base, like granted, they haven't been good for a while now, but in terms of being like a blue blood national program, you know, like they expect to win. How, and considering what you've done at Baylor and Temple, how long, like, do you estimate, like, it takes to actually kind of, like, rebuild the program and get guys in who you know you're going to be able to compete in the Big Ten every single year, especially when, you know, like, that allure to just go in the transfer portal and get guys right away and, and try to turn around in one season? Like, how, how long would you guess, like, it actually takes to go from where you guys are at right now to where you want to be where you're contending for Big Ten championships? You know, it took us it took us three years at Temple and it took us three years at Baylor. So when I got here, I thought, you know, we, we would be relevant the first year. And I hoped in, you know, year three, year two, year three, year four, that we would be contending. Um, the, the, the unique thing with the portal is um, a lot of other coaches, and I mean this with the greatest of respect, they left another job. They were in another college job. And so they brought part of their team with them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I left Carolina. I didn't get to bring Brian Burns. I didn't get to bring... Stephon Gilmore. I didn't get to bring Christian McCaffrey. So, you know, I wasn't bringing anyone that was playing for me. But, you know, you look at you look at the great job that, you know, like Coach Sanders has done at Colorado and obviously bringing his son and bringing Travis Hunter. And, you know, he brought great players with him. You know, Lincoln, who was a great friend of mine, goes to USC. He takes Caleb Williams with him. You know, we just came in and we started, you know, we started differently. So we just said, you know what, let's do it like we did at Temple and Baylor. Let's recruit young players. Let's play them. Um, you know, we, uh, we, 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 fe- we felt like we would be in every game this year. You go back and look at it. We were in every game, you know, we lost five games, five games by three points or less. You know, we got beat up by Michigan, Michigan got after us and, and uh, Colorado got away from us, but we'll, we'll, we'll be in every game next year again, I believe. I love that thought of building it. Cause you, you love coaching. I assume, right. That's probably, you just love, coaching. I love coaching. You know how proud I am. Like you know how proud I am when I turn on the NFL and I see like Deion Dawkins and Tyquan Thornton and Tyler Matikevich and, uh, you know, Jalen Petrie, who was like a no star recruit, who was the only guy left over at Baylor. And he's one of the dominant safeties at, for the Texans now. And um, I love that. I love that relationship with the players. And so, you know, when I got fired in Carolina, two things happened. Um, a couple of the players on the team came over to my house afterwards, which normally doesn't happen in the NFL. And but what else, the second thing that happened was a bunch of my old college guys that I had coached. It was almost like I was dead. Like they were eulogizing me. They were like, coach, man, this is what you meant to me. And I was like, bro, I'm not dead. I just got fired. But but it was like, you know what? I'm getting back into college because I, we're talking about the portal. But young people still need adults and they need coaches to believe in them and push them and help them. And, you know, we first you know, we, we need to we need to have first generation kids go to college and graduate. And we need all kinds of things to happen that isn't always being talked about. But we're going to try to win at the highest level and still make sure guys get an education and make sure guys lead, lead good lives and you know what if we do that we're doing something right and uh you know coaches probably change your guys lives at some point oh, yeah. you know good or bad we just want to be one of the good ones yeah hey there has been bad obviously but yeah. the good ones do <laughs> affect your life forever i love the thought we haven't brought it up yet you know because you're at nebraska you never going back to the nfl you think never i i you know the hardest thing about being an nfl head coach coming from college is that you're coming from college like i would do like you know you start off and you do something and they're like, oh, this college guy, even though you even though you took it from Coach Coughlin, who's a Hall of Famer, you're like, that guy's, I mean, I, I uh Pat Stewart, who I think AJ might know from Ohio State, Pat had been at Pat had been in New England, he'd be like, Hey, this is a great idea. Or Matt Lombardi, be like, hey, we did this with uh Brian Flores and you do it. And everyone's like, Oh, this college guy. Oh my God. <laughs> I, this is not my idea. But you know, you know, I mean, I hit it a really weird time, and I came in, COVID was really hard because they didn't really know me. They hadn't, yeah, and so all of a sudden I show up and I'm a college guy, new staff, and and we're we're meeting over a Zoom call. Like that last year, um, you know, I was already on my way out, but I was really proud about the guys. The guys battled, and you know, and and so, um, but I don't think I think I think this is where I'm supposed to be, man. I think I'm supposed to be in college. I, I love this, and uh, I'll just I'll just hopefully turn out a bunch of pro players from Nebraska and watch uh, watch uh, watch great coaches like you know Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay do their thing at that level. Yeah, and. Raise your kids out there. Go watch a volleyball game, a women's mm-hmm. volleyball game in front of a sold-out stadium, and then go see Luke Combs at night, Ooh, and then mm-hmm. just probably low taxes, <clears throat> if I had to guess. Yep. Live, yeah. live out there. You haven't seen anything until you've seen Husker Volleyball, and they play this Thursday. They're uh, 
they're outrageous. They're they're such amazing athletes. And yeah, you know, to your point, it's pretty cool. I have two, I have ten and eight year old daughters, man. And I I take them to the women's volleyball game. I take them to the women's basketball game, the men's basketball game. There's something about being on a college campus that's pretty cool. And and yes, the taxes are pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. and there's great concerts, man. Old Dominion and Chase Rice this past weekend came to town. So we always have something good going in Nebraska. Chase Rice, good luck to your North Carolina Tar Heels in the Mayo Bowl, pal. Mm -hmm. Last time we met at that particular stadium, Chase Rice played his last football game. They win? No, they lost to the West Virginia Mountaineers. Oh, okay. Yeah, by one. You know what I mean? By <laughs> oh, one. is that right? Yeah, it was a good time. Anyways, AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, after uh, your time in Carolina, was did you give any thought to maybe taking a year off? I know Coach is Coach. You want to get right back into it, but what was your thought process after that? Yeah, I was absolutely uh, AJ going to take a year off. Um, I uh, I was tired, you know. I was I was beat up, and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to take my time and find the right job." And uh, I think two things happened. I got fired so early that I had the rest of that year, which was almost kind of like a year off. And uh, like my wife and I traveled. We went to Ireland, man. We first bar we sit down, and I'm like, I just want to be away. <laughs> The, the the gentleman walks up to the bar, you know, the order two Guinness, and he's like, "Are you Matt Rule?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh, man!" He was like, he was like, he's like, "I love the Red Zone. I'm a Jets fan," and, you know. And it, I mean, it was just, it was just like, you know what? I'm a coach, man. Let's go back. Let's get back to work. But I wouldn't have taken any job. Um, I wasn't going to coach. I was going to take a year. You know, on my contract, I had to find a job, so I knew I had to honor my contract. And um, I wasn't just going to take any job though. And and Nebraska came open, as I said, Trev. And it's one thing to go to a school that's never done it before and try to be the first to win a championship. Every day I walk through this building, I walk by five national championship trophies. Dang. You know, I, it's another thing to get a place back to where it was. I walk by three Heismans. I go out to practice and I have, I have, you know, Frank Solich and Tom Osborne at practice watching. I got Eric Crouch and Tommy Frazier. I mean, it's a pretty cool place. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have coached had it not been for this. Um, but yeah, I, I really thought about taking a year. Um, but you know, my, this is what I do. I'll, I'll do this till I die. Guinness, we're beer. Beer is that? That's the, we'll go to Guinness beer. Is that what we're drinking? Yeah, it, it, I, if I'm if I'm in Pittsburgh, I'm gonna have an icy light. Oh. If I'm there, I'm gonna have a Guinness. Um, I, I, I believe in I believe in regional beers. Living. I believe in I'm at Eastern PA. I'm gonna go to get have a Yingling. I believe in you know yeah. sampling what's what's happening. You know where you are. What's there in Nebraska? Well, they got some corn. IPA. Yuck. Yeah, there, there, there's some good things. I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to single anything out because I don't want to get in trouble here. Um, I don't want one one brewery mad at me. What I will say is there's elite bourbons here. You you have access here to some of the best bourbons. So if you like to slip on a little bourbon every once in a while, it's a great place to come. Yeah, sounds like. I mean, you're selling the shit out uh, of this thing. Yeah. Getting the job. Mm -hmm. Darius has a question for you. Yeah, uh, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get game day soon. Hey. Okay. <laughs> oh. Say that one more time. You weren't on the camera there. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll get, we had game day at Temple. We had game day at Baylor. We'll get nice. game day here soon. Okay. All Hell right, yeah. Right, clip. Boom. <clears throat> bang. <laughs> Let's go. When this happens, you know, in the next year or so. Pretty sweet. It'll be a sweet clip. It's like, this fucking Matt Rule guy. He knew. <laughs> he knew what yep. was going to happen. I'm sorry. Go ahead, D-Butt. Now, Matt, uh, I got a question. You obviously have uh, been into some a few different colleges and obviously had a head coaching job as well in the NFL. How uh, similar or different are those interviews during that process uh, on, on in NCAA and in the NFL? Yeah, they're, 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 that's a great question, man. Because I, you know, I think in my time uh, before I took the Panthers job, I had interviewed for like two or three jobs the previous couple of years, and so each one was a little different. You know, some it's an owner, some some use a search firm. Um, you know, the, the the jobs are so different. So much of the NFL is economics; it's money. It's you know how are we going to allocate this? How are we going to allocate that? How are you going to work with the GM? I really, you know, people don't understand. Like to me, the salary cap. Uh, person is as important as the GM. So a lot of it focused kind of on those things. Um, as in college, you know, your conversations are about recruiting, about academics, about discipline. You know, you certainly didn't worry about academics and really even discipline in the NFL. So it was much more of a, hey, you know, is there something special we're going to do here? Like if you're in Indianapolis, hey, are we going to play fast and have great pass rushers try to get a lead and because we're playing in the dome or, hey, if we're playing in Green Bay, are we going to play a little differently, you know, with the weather? So there's there's a little bit of that I think, but a lot of it to me is the NFL is about player acquisition and player retention, and it's 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 all economics. It's about it's about who's willing to pay the sign and bonuses, who's willing to trade, you know, who's going to make the right moves. And so a lot of that was you talking with the owner, talking with the GM at all these places about how do you see it, how do they see it, how, you know. And so um, yep. it's it's a little bit different, you know, still your core philosophy maybe, but a little bit different in terms of the actual like do's and don'ts.
You said something in your answer uh, about the interview process and drinking and somebody calling you out. You said because your contract one year you had to or something like you had to coach or you had to attempt to coach. Is that what? It, is that what? It, what? Yeah, I think you know, I think in all, you know in, in all contracts, you know, if, if they're paying you multiple years, got it. And you know, if it, you know, there's you have you usually have a duty to try to mitigate and go oh, find another job. Good so, business, try um, to do good business. Yeah, you could, you know. So I, to me, it was really important to me that you know, hey, I wanted to coach. You know, the year before. I had some opportunities to go back to college with some really lucrative jobs. And, you know, just in our discussions, you know, my family and I, you know, while it wasn't going great uh, in Carolina, I never wanted to quit. You know, I didn't want to be one of those coaches that just quit and ran. I didn't want to show my kids that. Like my whole goal in Carolina, besides, you know, I wanted to win, obviously, and, you know, uh, win a championship. I wanted my son to finish high school. And uh, we weren't able to, you know, he's, he, he's actually living there. He doesn't live with us anymore. He's finishing high school his senior year there right now. Um, but, you know, so I wasn't going to quit. But there, there were some different things that happened. So when I got this job, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, when I, when I got fired, I was always going to look for a job and just had to be a good one. And this was a great one. Yeah. It seems like you're building up a, a beautiful thing. Over there. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine yeah. he does a temple Baylor and then also Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So he walks past five national championships over there. Sweet. Yeah. Hey, those trophies got to look good. huh? Those are the, uh, yeah, that's got to look sweet. Pretty they look good. Bro. Yeah. I could imagine. I could imagine. That's good motivation. Uh -huh. Also, whenever the guys get in there, you said you didn't know much about Nebraska. I like to think of the thought of you and your wife, by the way, at Nebraska game with a hat on, just being like in the student mm -hmm. section, in the, in the <laughs> tailgate or something, being like, place pretty sweet, but yeah. pretty sweet. Well got good energy here. The whole, the whole thought of you building a other school back up to a place is like you'll go down as one of the greatest coaches of all time but like that is that's a big deal right i, I mean i don't know your age i don't know your age right. how old are you 48 yeah that's young. 48 oh yeah you got what like another 30 years at least of coaching. i'm gonna coach for a long time i'll i'll um like like if i if i wouldn't have gotten a job i, I would have coached like a, i would have been a high school tight ends coach in charlotte or so i'll always coach i i love kids i love i love young people so i'll always coach but I, you know, I think the big thing for me was it's not just winning. It's it's the way that we do it. And that's why Nebraska was important to me because Nebraska believes in player development. They, you know, they were when when Coach Osborne and Coach Devaney had this place rolling and then Coach Solich, it was, you know, they were the leaders in the weight room. They were the leaders in really sports science. They were the first ones to have a study hall, a training table. Like they were the Georgias and Alabamas of that day. And so we came back. And I'll be honest, I was very blessed to to be around Christian McCaffrey because my time with Christian, I learned more about sports science, more about recovery than I ever could have. And we came here and we took out a bunch of recruiting stuff and we put in, I mean, our our our, our building here is state of the art and it's state of the art for development. And so I, to me, it's about, it's about, I, I want us to win, but I want us to win in a way that honors the state of Nebraska and honors college football, where it's not a quick fix, where we're where we're recruiting high school kids and developing them and growing them. And if we can do that, then it's three places that we went to. And it's not me. It's all the whole staff that's with me. You know, I got 13 former players working for me in different areas, you know, from Carolina to Temple to Baylor. So to me, it's about like, Hey, we went to three places and we left them better than we found them and we built them from the ground up. And so I'm proud of Temple. I'm proud of Baylor. And I love what we're doing here so far. Um, we just gotta, we just gotta get over the hump and, and and get to where we're winning championships. Thirteen X players tells me the players love playing for you. Yeah. You know, once you find your people, you got the people that want to stay in there, and if they can make a living off of continuing to do it, yeah. you're a good man for that entire thing. AQ has a question for you, Coach. Coach Roll, what's up? Uh, got a big what's question. Up, I, was, I was a little offended that you didn't mention offensive line. You mentioned Scott Frost or Eric Crouch and Tommy <laughs> Frazier, all these former guys, skill guys coming out to watch practice. You have offensive and defensive linemen scattered all over the NFL from everywhere you've coached in college. You just re-signed Rayola to us, an extension coaching on Who's the that? offensive line. What's his name? Uh, Rayola. What's that, Coach Rayola? Coach Rayola, yeah. He has a pretty good lineage of, uh, yeah, quarterback in his family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. That. Anyways, he's offensive anyways, line coach. Anyways, he's the offensive line coach. Got it. How important is that for you to build up Nebraska among the offensive and defensive lines? Yeah, it, it's the heartbeat of of it's the heartbeat of this place, and it's the heartbeat of how you have to play here. Like, um, I would say, AQ, there's there's two quarters a game in most games where the wind is 25 miles an hour in your face, no. or 15, 25 miles an hour in your face, and so like we're not, you know, I watch, you know, you portal, you're watching kids in Texas, you're watching kids in Florida, like it's 26 degrees and the and the wind's blowing right at you, so you better be able to line up and stop the run, and you better be able to line up and run the football and. In the heyday of Nebraska, obviously defense, the black shirts, 
and obviously the offensive line, the pipeline. And those guys, you know, those guys obviously come around. Brendan Stye, so many of them, they, you know, he, he works here. They, 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 they care about the program, but we have to be able to run the football. In our, in our first year, you know, we were, we, I think we were first or second in the league, in the league in rushing. Uh, we, we, we fixed our run defense. We were one of the top two or three run defenses, whereas the year before had been the last. So there are such big people out here in the Midwest. You know, to me, it's about getting them here, getting them in a strength program. And we want to walk out on the field and you to know that that's Nebraska. Like, like, oh, they're all six foot six, 315 pounds. They got abs. They, that, they, that's what Nebraska football is. And so look at me talking about abs. But that's what Nebraska <laughs> football is. So, you know, we want to be that, you know. Your Temple team. Remember? Oh, yeah. I mean, your Baylor team, too. But oh, that, yeah. that Temple team, I got to see a couple of the of them. Uh, um, they were all mm-hmm. stacked. Six, three, four, four. Absolutely stropped. Jeez. Just like won the game before the game even. Like, look on the field. It's like, oh, that team. What are those? What is that? That team is huge. You That is a goal for you. That is something that you actually like, hey, we need studs here. We need to make them, though, in the weight room and everything like that because 18 to 22 is quite a development stage for the human body. So that is a focus of yours. Okay, I, I, that makes sense now, thinking back to the teams that you've had. Yeah, so much of recruiting is like who, who matured early. But, you know, you, you look at the, those teams you said at Temple, like, you know, Hassan Reddick walked on, and Hassan did it all himself. I don't take credit for Hassan Reddick. But Hassan went from a walk-on to a first-round draft pick in the weight room, in the way that we practice. Deion Dawkins, you know, we Deion, you know, starting left tackle the Buffalo Bills, someone I'm really proud of. Like he had just gotten dropped by Cincinnati, had nowhere to go, and we stopped at his house, and we were like, you know what? It was like a it was like a romantic comedy. I walked out of the house and I stopped, and I walked back in. I said, "You have a scholarship, you know, be there, be there Sunday." It was like Friday. I said, "Be there Sunday," and he showed up, and you now he's making millions of dollars in Buffalo and impacting the community. So, like that was that type of place, man, where you had the you had to build your team in the weight room and you had to build your team on the practice field. And again, that all goes back like that team after we won 10 games in 2015 would have been hard to keep together in 2016. You know, they would have had guys would have had offers from all over the country nowadays. They come play for us, uh, play for us now in 2023. So, but I was proud of those guys. And so when I came here, we said Nebraska will want the type of team that we had at Temple defense, run the ball, play great special teams. And that's what we're going to try to do. Yeah, you talked about 26 mile an hour win. Ain't no punter or kicker signing up to go there. <laughs> nope. Gonna have to get a real mentally tough guy. Gonna have to get a real me- Hey, I'm pulling for you. You'll find him. You'll find him. <laughs> Connor has a question for you, coach, about making people run through a damn wall. Yeah, coach, one of my favorite parts of this college football season was waiting for that Sunday or Monday release video of you getting the mm-hmm. boys ready to play. I think you, you're like McGuire in the 90s, just hitting bombs every week. Without for the steroids. Without the, without the, the steroids. BDs, yeah. Although, who, who knows? But we don't know. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 He might be squatting 800 pounds, but uh, how how do you plan those? Or, or is that something that you go into the week like, hey, I got to start thinking of things I'm going to say to the boys to get them all revved up? Because I think it was a three and a half minute speech you gave once where it was about, you know, mothers and people who yep. have helped your team kind of get to where they are. And I don't know if it was like a team mom at the end, but it was someone who clearly didn't swear very often. And she might have said a swear and you guys muted it and the team went ballistic. But what goes into those? And did you ever try to do one of those at Carolina and they just didn't really hit because it was the NFL? Yeah, you know, I, I certainly don't do that every week. I I, I, I don't plan it. I, I kind of go with what hits me. And I kind of go with, you know, how I feel. And, you know, the obviously the NFL is a little different because the season's longer. But, you know, even you you watch Hard Knocks, you hear people talking with passion sometimes and energy sometimes. And, you know, um, we were at a point this year, like that that game was really special to me. Um, you know, my mom's a breast cancer survivor. My wife, Julie, lost her mom to breast cancer. So, you know, Julie invited all the moms, grandmoms, aunts, sisters to line the, the tunnel on the way out to the field. And, um, you know, we're a young team. We're trying to figure out how to win. You know, nowadays everything gets evaluated. Guys are nervous about making a mistake. And, and I just wanted them to, like, I want them to recognize because you sit guys in a room and then we all look at each other like, well, you know, I'm white. He's African-American. I'm old. He's young. I'm from the East Coast. You're from the – we find all the stuff that divides us. You start saying like, hey, who, who, whose mom had cancer? Whose dad had cancer? Whose grandmother? And guys start raising their hands. And what we find out is that your worst day was also my worst day. And it's not about from that point on what divides us. About It's about what unites us. And so for me, that was a way to honor all those moms. It was a way for me to honor my mom and for me to honor Julie and her mom. And um, what was great about Mrs. Piper was her son, uh, Ethan, uh, tore his knee up, every ligament in his knee the week before, mm. and couldn't be at the game. And as we were marching into the stadium, we saw her. I said, hey, would you please come down with us 
and she came down and uh, she got the boys ready to go. And uh, we went out, and we won that game, man. So, but yeah, I, I, I don't ever plan it. Um, I, I, at the end of the day, like sometimes they might fall a little bit flat. Sometimes maybe they hit with the guys, but I want it to always be authentic and I want it to always be real because players know if you're fake and they know if it's real. And that, that, that game meant a lot to me. And I will say this, I've had more people reach out to me uh, who've had loved ones uh, harmed by cancer or who have someone in the throes of it. And for them to think about like, hey, you know what? Like, it's not, it, 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 it's it's me every day of my life honoring the ones that I love who are battling cancer by the way that I do things for me to be a weapon and not just, I think um, that, that if we did anything good this year, that was kind of a cool moment. And, you know, it wasn't about me, it was about our team. It was about the moms. Mega viral. Mm -hmm. Great message. That's a good thing. I appreciate you letting whoever let that out, out, you know, because that's a decision that has to be made as well, especially in the modern era. What what does, doesn't deserve to get out? What should get out? What helps the team? What helps the world, though? And you let us in yeah. on a little bit of that. We appreciate that, Coach, genuinely. Thanks, Go ahead, AJ. Thank you. Coach, what's it like going into someone's house, say, with they're 16, 17 years old, you're recruiting them, and then bringing them into your program and watch them develop and become a starter, say, make plays, go to the NFL and kind of develop as a man. I would imagine as a coach, that's what you're – you definitely miss that in the NFL game, but in college, kind of mold these guys and help them in this pivotal part of their life. Like, what is that like for you as a coach? Yeah, I think it's um, – I think it's it's uh, it's vital. You said something there that was really important to me too is go into their homes. You know, like um, I go into every – you know, when you, when you start recruiting, I try to go into every person's home if I can because, I you know, I want to see their home and I want to see what's important to them and – you know, we recruit people all over the country. One thing you learn is there's great people everywhere. And, you know, my wife, and, and you know, AJ, she did this in the NFL every Thursday night. Uh, it was Friday night in the NFL. She has a different position group over to our house. And at the end of the day, like, the, the players love nothing more than hearing Julie, you know, I'm the head coach, hearing Julie yell at me and call me Matthew, and they all think it's nuts. And, I mean, even in the NFL, man, I had, I mean, I had, I had Stefan Gilmore sitting on my couch, playing with my dogs, hanging out with my kids. I mean, like, life's about people. And so, I like that part of it and seeing where guys are from. And the thing that's cool about college, AJ, is not everything goes like this. Not everything's like a linear equation, right? Like you go through ups and downs, highs and lows, and guys, you know, they they hit a pitfall. They hit a distraction. Something's going on at home. And we've always wanted to be the staff that helps them through that. And, you know, I tell them right now, like, hey, guys, don't worry about what you're doing as a freshman. Let's worry about as a senior, if you have a degree, if you won a championship, if you're going off to the NFL, if you're going to be a doctor, like, Let's worry about that. And that's what I struggled with in the NFL was you build this great relationship with somebody and then the GM walks in the end's like, hey, we need to let them go. And all of a sudden, boom, it's a transaction. They're gone and maybe they're back on Tuesday. And that's just not me. I mean, that's just that's just not who I am. I like having those connections with guys. And so I obviously did it. And I didn't always do it right because it was so hard for me. And so I like this. I like watching those guys grow and develop. I like, you know. I'm starting to get to the age now where I'm starting to offer guys that I coach as a young assistant. I'm offering their kids now. Oh, and so, oh yeah. 48, oh yeah. 48. 48. You know, there's, you know, they, they had, they had a kid at 21, 22 and yeah. here we go now. So. Oh, it's over. Trust me to coach them because I coached them. To me, that's that's pretty cool if we can do it right. We don't always do it right, but we do the best we can. A lot of trust there from the players to you whenever they're freshmen, and you say, "Let's worry about what happens senior year." Because you know, we're just. Uh, in, it seems like in 2023, it's vastly different. You know, it feels like this year, from what we've heard and what the national narrative is about college football right now, it's not about hey two three years from now. It's about right right mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Right now, which leads to this from Tone, which is a wild thing. Yeah, Coach, I don't know if you've had to deal with it yet or if you've planned on how you would deal with it. Like, have you had any players like 19, 20 year olds who come into your office and say, hey, I want X amount of dollars or I'm going to hit the portal and I'm going to go try to find more money at a different place? <laughs> like, have you had to deal with that? How how do you deal with that? Like, if you let them go out and bring them back, if they don't find it, like, what's this, what's the process there? Yeah, I mean, it's I, so I've definitely dealt with it. I've had guys come in and I've really had guys say to me, like, hey, coach, so and so from such and such schools reached out. You know, they've got this amount of money or the quarterback from this school, because a lot of it's going through like the quarterbacks are doing. Hey, this quarterback from this school has offered me this amount. And sometimes when the amounts are like, it's $800,000, I'm like, bro, you should take that. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Like, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, that's that's fantastic. Um, I just try to make sure that they understand, like, hey, guys, listen, like going back to what we talked about. Words are words, you know, once you transfer, you're locked in there, you know, and I'm really proud of the fact, you know, we went five and seven, it's year one, you know, we had one guy go in the portal the first day, you know, wanted to go down and play FCS football, 
We had another guy, two other older guys, one in the portal, and because um, they want to be starters. I mean, we we haven't lost anybody, and I think it's because, I hope it's because the things we've talked about. You know, hey, being the team that's trying to develop guys, trying to help guys. I, th- I hope that they feel that way. And so, as I said, we have a great collective. We have a great NIL setup. Um, guys want to be here. They like being at Nebraska. But yeah, that's definitely the real world now. That's definitely the real world now. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, you can time it any time you want. You can hit free agency and you can go out and test the market. Um, I, I don't mind if a player says, coach, I'm a backup for you. Can I go in the portal and see if there's a place I can start? I've let guys, if guys are going to go out and see, you know, hey, coach, can I see if I get more money? I think they probably, they probably don't need to be here. But if, if it's, if it's because they want to play, I mean, I was a backup. I was a walk on at Penn State. I understand that. I, I'm always going to help guys if they want to play somewhere. Um, but we try to manage it just honestly and straightforward. And uh, thankfully, we haven't lost anyone. We are Penn State. Can't say it. Can't do that anymore. No, nope. yeah, I saw him. He almost. Yeah, he was close. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to your ass. <laughs> no, I, I love Penn State. I love Penn State. I love James Franklin. The AD at Penn State, Pat Kraft hired me at Temple. I love Penn State, but go Big Red. <laughs> That'll be a big one for you. You know, that'll be emotional in there. Mm-hmm. Hey, future of the Big Ten is changing, right? Everything's uh, – everything. oh. Yeah, it's great. Do we like this? We like this. We, there's no more divisions, right? We're kind of. What do you think? Yes, I, I, I um, I would love to see a day where it's like you know four teams in the Big Ten all play a playoff to determine the league champ. You know, and I think that the SEC did something similar. Oh. Um, I, I wish. I, I just think college football like should get very. I think college football. A, I think we should have the same rules as the NFL. We should have a two minute warning. Like, how are we playing college football and pro football? And we have different hashes. It makes no sense to me. They, down, by contact, down by contact, too. Down by contact. I don't understand why yeah, down, have... down by contact is a tough thing to watch. Change it. Yeah, Two feet. Tough. Yeah. Two feet. I don't understand. Right? Like, no, no technology. Like, you know, we go to a high school game, they have huddle on the sidelines. They got iPads. We, you know, we're, we're holding up signs and boards. We don't have – So, I'm, and I think they're working on all this stuff. But I, college football, to me, could be really healthy if we got the same rules as the NFL. We implemented technology. And I think um, if as they go to the bigger playoff, I think it's going to be hopefully really good for football. Like, I'm – I'm up the other night till like one o'clock in the morning watching Albany play whoever I in the know. FCS playoff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm watching Furman the other night. I Montana. love college football. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. What a great, I mean, what great games. And so I, I, I think the Big Ten will probably have this league will probably have four teams in there every year. You know that's South Dakota State's world down there. Uh huh. They've won 27 straight games. South Dakota State Jackrabbits. <laughs> I gave the other team that credit. That's <laughs> yeah. not a I messed up bad there, but I. Hey Pat, in my in my negotiations here, I was like, hey, listen, Fred, I know you handle, it, but can we keep the word Dakota out of our scheduling? I don't need to play it. <laughs> North Dakota, they, South Dakota, South Dakota State. Those guys are tough, great coaches. I I respect the heck out of them. Man. Yeah, we don't need to be, you know, in those early weeks scheduling uh-uh. any potential. Whoa, what was that? What are we doing? And also flying out there. To the entire place, which is one of the weapons of Nebraska, getting there. But once you get there, you're going to fall in love with it. We appreciate you, man. Thank you for spending time with us. This is a great conversation. I assume you had numerous things you had to do, and we just blew right the fuck through it. <laughs> so that's on me. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Man, I love this. Thank you very much. I, I got a lot of family and friends that were like, when are you going to get on the show? When are you going to get on the show? This was, now my kids are going to think I'm cool today. So thank you. Me and AJ called... What was that, AJ? What that was the first time me and AJ were ever, I think Baylor, Texas Tech, I believe we worked yeah. the game. Yep. Yeah, Baylor Tech oh, with oh. Cliff. Yeah, we actually talked to you. We interviewed you. Uh we also Charlie talked, Brewer. Charlie Brewer. Charlie man, what a football player. Oh. He had a jug of water with him, like he a full did. thing. It was the whole the whole team was doing it. We got a chance to really yeah, dude, you were very kind to us and you got a huge win. Yeah. Beat Cliff. That was that, that, that got yeah, us to bowl eligible year too. That, that was a huge that was a huge day and yeah, Charlie Brewer, man, what a football player. He's still I love playing in college. Kid. He might. He, yeah, he was playing like six <laughs> nah, he's, years. He's done. No, nah, he's done. He's done. I think he's trying. I think he's probably hopefully playing, trying to play in the XFL or USFL or kind of cool. They have those leagues now, so guys have a chance mm-hmm. to put some tape out there. But Charlie, man, he could play football. Certainly could. Just like a lot of the guys that you've recruited and brought into your programs. Good luck out there in Nebraska. Until the next time, brother, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football team, Matt Rule. Yeah, coach. Oh.